Ahoy friends, welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan, and this is a project to build a Chamberlain Racing Dory from John Gardner's The Dory Book. Illustrations by Sam Manning. Today we'll be out in the shop working on the rig. We've got a, got a good amount of um, wire splicing to do to get the... Uh, the rest of the shrouds and the uh, forestay ready to go on the dory. Okay, so I didn't show this part of the operation last time. These are the uh, crimps, the little metal crimps. For the, um, the wire we're using. And I think, uh, I think our wire weight is uh, 330 seconds, which is uh, sort of the, the second heaviest, uh, the second heaviest from the thinnest wire you can get at a you know typical uh, a typical hardware store or you know a well-stocked hardware store that's got this sort of thing. So I've got a, a countersink here, and I'm opening up the uh, I'm opening up the end of the um, of the crimp so that it'll go down over the uh, over the strands of wire better. I'm going to clean out any of the chips that I just made. I'm careful uh, clamping this crimp in place because I don't want to actually distort the crimp. I don't want to crimp it. I just want to hold it so that I can uh, so I can open up the end of it so it'll go down over the wire that we're going to be splicing. Okay, so last video we cut we cut this we cut this wire which made one of the shrouds. So now we've got a uh, we've got the rest of our wire here. So now we've got a raw end, and what we want to do is make a loop in this, splice a loop in this wire. So, um, but we've already got a shroud made. So we want to make the second shroud uh, within reason as closely matching the uh, first shroud as we can. So we'll use the first shroud. To measure the second from. It's fairly simple. We know where we want the um, we know where we want the splice to end, which is right where the crimp is on this one. So we'll get a uh, similar sized loop. Now that's close enough, and uh, and I'll mark. I'll mark the new the new wire we're doing. There, so I won't lose that mark now. All right. So next thing I'll do is uh, the crimp that we just opened up the end on. We want the open end to come down over the splice. So now I've got to thread the wire that we cut. Got to thread it through the tight end of that crimp. There it goes. So we're through. And I'll go down past uh, past the uh, black magic marker. There it is right there. <laughs> All right, so this is where we're splicing to. So I'll put a little wrap of uh, 
electrical tape around there to keep us from splicing any further. I'll cut that off. A little bit tough here working around the camera, but I think we'll make it. I think we'll we'll do it. Um, Okay, so that's going to be our splice, our eye splice. On the low bridge. That's the overhead there. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> here we are. I'm going to, uh, at this point, Grab my glasses, safety glasses, goggles. These uh, these little wire ends can be uh, super nasty, so you definitely got to have a pair of. You know, glasses aren't quite enough. You really need safety glasses or goggles. All right, and then just like uh, last video, last episode. We're going to get one, two, three strands of wire in a row, one after the next. All right, we're going to keep them laying together. No need, to, no need to separate the in, them into individual strands. Just grab three of them. This is a seven by seven wire. There's uh, six wires on the outside and then a core strand. This is stainless wire. I keep wanting to call it wire rope, but that's just what my grandfather always used to call it. But this is just uh, typical stainless wire that you'd purchase at any hardware store that's, you know, well-stocked hardware store. All right, so we're right down to the... Um, to the mark we made. Um, now to make your splice, you just basically make a heart that goes to the uh, where you've unwrapped the wire to. All right, uh, we could do one more. One more wrap here. One more unwrap. There we go. Now we're right at the. Now we're right at the tape. Bring the ends down. Now where the uh, where the two strands lay over here at the top, they're going to uh, find the spot where one lays into the next. Make sure I got the right. And lay the three strands
No, haven't met, haven't matched up yet. Let's see. Here we go. There we go. Lay the lay the three strands in, right where they came out of in the uh, in the wire wrap. And the trick is to not fray the ends too much while you're doing all this. So careful with what you're doing with the one you're wrapping, and then also try and keep an eye on the one that you're uh, that's flailing around. You don't want to be bending or fraying the individual strands of wire. You want to keep all three strands and all four strands as close to uh, intact as possible on their ends, because that's what allows you to get a nice, clean uh, lay when you come back together. Nice clean lay of the wire. All right, so now I'm gonna go with the four strands, which is the three outer strands that I didn't pick up, and the core. I'm just laying it back in on itself. And it pretty much does this for you once you get those strands synced up. You, know, you saw I had a took a little bit of uh, playing to get the strands matching, but once they do match, it's uh, it's pretty obvious. You see, it's just going in on top of itself there. This is called a Danish eye splice. All right, so now there we go. You can see how those have laid right in on top of each other. And uh, we didn't fray them too bad putting them in. So now what we'll do is we'll undo the vise and we'll bring that swage up over everything that you see right there um, probably up to about this point just so the swage covers the strands but doesn't have the strands poking out again on the other side All right, so here's the swage that we uh, drilled out the end on. I'm just gonna take my time using that swage up and over the double. There you go. See, we just got up onto the uh, we just got up onto the to the splice. I'm not feeling any any um, any of the wire ends sticking through so the wire ends are up in there. Now I'll grab the uh, crimp tool and we'll uh, we'll crimp this. I don't want this to move while I'm uh, while I'm grabbing the tool so I'll just very lightly I don't want to damage that wire any of those wire strands. Just very lightly set it in the vise. So here's our crimp tool, and we're going to be crimping on the second to smallest 
which is like I say is a three three thirty seconds. And uh, so we just um, oh. I don't want that moving on me. It's in the perfect spot. So we just uh, open the crimp tool all the way. Slide the um, slide the swage in until it's uh, centered on the tool. This is a single crimp. Now I just yank on those handles till that thing crimps, and it'll uh, really distort the metal. This is a, um, it's a shiny swage. You can see how bright it looks. And uh, I've heard folks, you know, like, oh, they're, they're talking about, you know, which swage is, uh, which crimps do you want to use? Well, this one here is uh, nice because it's actually a, um, that shine is the nickel in it, and then it's also got copper in it. So it's a nickel copper crimp. And what it does is uh, the copper allows it to be soft, you know, like a rivet or whatever, you know, making a rivet head. And then the nickel is uh, incredibly hard. It work hardens and becomes brittle which isn't usually a good thing, but when you distort the crimp, you're work hardening it. So the, uh, the copper sinks down in around the uh, strands of the wire, and then the nickel work hardens and becomes you know, almost brittle, but it resists, uh, resists forces trying to pull this apart. So now you can see we've got a beautiful little uh, Danish splice with the... Uh, sharp ends hidden under this crimp. And looking at it, you know, initially you'd think, oh, it's just a cheap little, you know, wimpy crimp on a, on a piece of wire that's just bent over on itself. There's no way that'll hold a mast up. But, um, but it's actually a splice. So this is a super strong way of, uh, of making a loop in a piece of wire. And we actually ended up doing a pretty good job uh, matching up um, our previous splice to this one. So yeah, as far as uh, as far as the art of dory building goes, we'll take that as uh, close enough. Looks good. All right, so I've hung up the uh, the previous shroud that we did at the 11 foot mark here and now we'll uh, now we'll measure now we'll measure for this second shroud and we want them within a you know within an inch of each other if possible that sounds good and if they come out closer than an inch so much the better um, Get them to hang together, and then I'll uh, and then I'll put a mark. And then I'll put a mark on this uh, new shroud. The. Uh, the danger is making it looser, because uh, when you're measuring, it's tough to uh, it's tough to get the. So there, I, at the same time, I've marked the end of the where we're going to cut it, and I've marked where the end of the splice will be. The third mark I'll make will just be the uh, the height of the apex of the. Um, of the uh, splice, the apex, the the end of the thimble there, the apex of the thimble. So this is where we're gonna cut.
to uh, to make the second shroud. So I'll uh, line that mark that we made on the wire. Make sure I got the right one because it was three. So here's the apex of the uh, corner. Here's the base of the splice. And here's the, um, here's the splice we already made. So we're on the right mark here. And now I'll uh, cut the wire. And like I was saying last uh, video, I don't have a good, um, I don't have a really good uh, wire cutter. I've got a bolt cutter, but that would uh, totally distort. That would distort the ends of the wire. So the best way to the best way to cut it is to uh, just clamp it here in a block and. I put a mark where so I'll know where to cut through the block, and it'll uh, it should keep the wire pretty pretty uh, pretty tight when you cut through it. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a pretty good cut. So we got a nice smooth and to our wire to work with, which is very important in doing these little swages. And the uh, next thing I want to do is counter bore another one of those uh, ferrules. So I don't want to really clamp the ferrule because I don't want to um, I'm kind of holding the uh, drill to one side and then holding the drill to the other, the counter bore to uh, uh, to get a good start for that. And then I'll um, I use this little tiny file just to make sure there's no burrs hanging down inside there from the counter bore. I can see some coming out. Just trying to get this so that it'll go down over the uh, over the splice we make, just as well as it possibly can. So you can see how that's opened up a little bit on one end. The other end I'll just leave as is. So the, the counter the counterboard end on the ferrule is towards the uh, is pointing towards the splice towards the loop that we're going to make, and I'll uh, again mark the bottom of the uh, splice to keep the keep the wire from spreading below that, and just give us a visual to go to. And the uh, device will keep it from uh, the device will keep us from going too far with the wire as well. All right, so now we're ready to start splicing. 
uh, as soon as I get the safety goggles on. Those little wire ends are nasty. So what we want to do is grab three strands. One, two, three. of the uh, seven strand wire if the third one doesn't jump off immediately you can kind of Find your way back and grab it, which is just what happened with that. So I got three strands here, and um, and three strands on the core here. See if I can get the light a little bit. Of three strands in the core here. So you can see the core running down the center and then there's still three strands around it. So I'll keep unwinding. I'm winding, here's the center, the apex of our uh, thimble. A hot, the you know the end of the eye. And I'll just keep on unwinding right down to the uh, to where we want the splice to join back up with the main wire. Okay, so I think yeah, right there is gonna do it. So all right. Now we just bend, we measure, pre-measure, to uh, to where we want the pieces to end up. And then while they're on there, while they're measured, you know, basically, we lay one wire in on the other. There they go, they just meshed. That's one strand too far though. Got to get them to mesh up further along. If they're not meshing where they need to on one side, flip the, uh, flip the wire. You can get them to fall in on the other side. Okay, there we go. They're they're uh, they're laying in there properly now. And then just work the wire back on itself. Be careful of the ends as you're going through. You don't want to fray the ends. So I'm carefully pushing them through the loop here. Because you want to keep those ends in good shape. And then we got the apex, which looks like it's in just about the right spot. We go back through on the other side. And like I say, these, once you get it lined up, once it starts meshing, and it's not difficult, you know, just, just keep feeling for it. Once it sets in, it'll, it'll be obvious. Uh-oh, I've got a wire that doesn't 
want to line up here. Uh, where is that from? Oh, it's coming back around this way, that's why. Alright, so now we're We've got these all in so that they're uh, laying down pretty good. I want to make sure I catch that little stray wire when we bring the... Uh, and now we'll bring the ferrule back through. Take off the, uh, the tape. Sometimes this tape is more trouble than it's worth. Alright, so take off the tape and then I'll bring the um, then I'll bring the ferrule back up. I've got this pair of uh, little needle nose pliers which works great for getting in any stray ends, which I can see is an end that's somehow a wire end that's oh, it just laid down in there. But anyway, you gotta carefully as carefully as you can. Get all those little stray ends to go in. There, I think I just felt them all pop in. And see, we're starting up over the, uh, we're starting up over the splice now. And I don't want those ends to come sticking out. They'll, they'll give me a nice little shot in the finger. Uh, but they're up in there. And, uh, and now we're ready to, uh, we're ready to crimp this. So I'm going to put this in the vise to hold it, make sure that that ferrule doesn't move on me. And then I'll get the crimp tool out. Okay, so I got the crimp. We're going with the second largest size. These are... Uh, there we go. What I want to do is make sure it's equally positioned front to back. Oh, shoot. And then bring the uh, crimp down on it before it moves. There we go. Okay, I got a decent crimp on that. Now we'll snag a... Uh, a thimble. And crimp the thimble onto it.
Yeah, that is kind of a pain with this vise. It doesn't have a, uh, the thread is exposed on it, so it moves anything that you're trying to, there we go. Just run between the, uh, between the thimble and the, um, oops. Speaking of room, I don't need to lift this up if I'm going to get the crimp tool in on it. I'm just using the uh, crimp tool to crimp down the, uh, the thimble a bit so it'll stay on the, uh, on the wire. Just crimping it over and around the, uh, the wire there. Yeah, you need a third hand for sure to to do this. There we go. Same thing here, just gonna Get the crimp tool on this and uh, capture the wire in the in the um, capture the wire in the there it goes in the thimble in the end of the thimble there. All right, so, so the wire is captured, and um, now we'll just wrap this with uh, some of that, we'll uh, whip this with friction tape to uh, cover up the pointy bits, and uh, we got a second, uh, we got a second shroud made. All right, and there she is, ready to uh, ready to go on the dory and hold the mast up like crazy. Thanks so much for dropping by, building the Alpha Dory. Massive thank you to everyone who's liked, subscribed, and supported the channel. I look forward to seeing everybody next episode and out on the water real soon. Have a great day. God bless.